Hey everybody, and welcome to Authors and Dragons, where a group of comedic fantasy writers get together and try to make it through a whole game of Pathfinder without accidentally dying. Let's see if we pull it off this week. As always, the odds do not look great. Hi, I'm John Harkness, and I'll be playing the role of Fandingo the Fantastical, the hot, sexy, throbbing bard, love must... Wait, no, that's a different... Like, never mind. Um, in real life, I write things like Bubba the Monster Hunter and the Black Knight Chronicles and Quincy Harker Demon Hunter and the Shadow Council Case Files, all of which can be found on johnhartness.com or other places. Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi, a human incarnate Cadbury mini-egg and aspiring Pokeball. I was one of the seven authors in the Mongoliad, and I, my debut novel, Skyfire, is coming out from Angry Robot Books in uh, uh, September 5th, 2017. And uh, in uh, this uh, game, I play the role of extremely socialized, vaguely misanthropic barbarian Bjorn Bjornsson. Hi. I'm Rick Walteri, and I play the role of Silas Kane slash the mysterious Arrow of the Gods. His true identity will never be known. And in real life, I write uh, I write the Tome of Bill car horror comedy series. The complete series is available now, and uh, soon to come, Lichen Moon and Get Bent. Hello, my name is Robert Bevan. I play the role of Klaus Richter, notorious rogue. Ah, in real life, I write the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, lit RPG novels and short stories, starting with the first book, Critical Failures. The fifth book will be released on the same day as this podcast goes live, so go get that. Hey, I'm Steve Weverell. I play Brandon Feimester, the extremely well-oiled monk. Uh, in real life, I write a comedy fantasy series, The Doomsayer Journeys. My name is Drew Hayes, and this week I am sponsored by Showing Up Drunk. Showing Up Drunk. Make an evening you can't remember, one that strangers will never forget. And in, <laughs> in regular life, I write books like Superpowers, NPCs, Fred the Vampire Accountant, Forging of Festus, and while normally I run the GM of this game, tonight I'm just here for tech support and in case of random voices. And I am Misty Massey, playing the role of Drew Hayes tonight. I'm the I'm the guest DM, and I'm the author of Mad Kestrel, a rollicking adventure of magic and piracy on the high seas, and Kestrel's Dance, the upcoming sequel from Lore Seekers, Lore Seekers Press. I'm also writing the first of a series of Shadow Council novellas set in the weird old west for Falstaff Books, and I'm delighted to be here with you guys tonight. So, hi! Hi! Uh, um, Hello. Welcome back. Hi. I know. Hey, I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we did something wrong. We did not manage to offend you. We yeah, have yeah. another chance. You, you <laughs> always have another chance. <laughs> so when last we met, or when last we were together, you guys were uh, stunned to discover that the beautiful women uh, were not actually so women me and not at all as beautiful um one of them is lying dead at fandingo's feet uh being having been shot by a couple of arrows from silas who is uh walking around in circles going i was right i was right <laughs> a, a paladin of torig is always aware when when there is evil afoot assuming that he's paying attention <laughs> well, apparently you were paying attention this time. So, um, although the quiches, the little quiches were not evil, but uh, but you know the women you did go after, and um, you did kill the oldest of the three. The uh, the two younger ones are uh, not happy about it at all, and have started uh, making this very unpleasant screeching noise. And they're reaching their hands out in either direction. And as you're, as you're watching, their bodies are elongating and becoming less human and more um, bird-like. And Bjorg their arms... Go ahead. Uh, Bjorg is going to um, pause, look down at the, uh, at the legal document he's smoking, <laughs> and look back at the women and go, well, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, that their their arms are reaching out and uh, stretching, and uh, the the robes that they were wearing fall off, and you see that from the neck down, 
they have feathers and they are they are very bird like and their arms are becoming wings and let's see um Klaus, roll me a roll me a perception. Will do. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'd like right. every everybody roll me a perception. Klaus right. right. rolls a six. <clears throat> Fandinga rolls a thirteen. Jorg rolls a thirteen. Klaus rolls an eighteen. Klaus percepts like a motherfucker. Yes, he does. <laughs> Brandon, what did you roll? Uh, Brandon is still opening the window. Okay, well then I'll go with Klaus and we'll <laughs> come back to you. Okay, Klaus, you're looking at these the the women turning into these bird-like creatures, and you notice that the one that was um, petting your weasel and paying so much lovely attention to it has an injury on one of her wings. An injury, oh, dear. That, an injury that you recognize. Is it weasel induced? No, it's Klaus induced. Oh. It's the oh, it's the one you shot. When you first came upon All right, the- okay. <laughs> Thank you for helping me with my perception. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we, need, we, need, we all need help now and then. No, you realize <laughs> that that's the creature that you shot that was attacking the older sister in the forest when you first oh, met her. Right. Was That's the one that was petting... Um, uh, um, your weasel. What's his name? Ron Weasley Jeremy. Ron Weasley Jeremy, yeah. You let her near Ron you Weasley bitch. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to have so many trust issues now. <laughs> Good. Incidentally, I rolled an 18. Brandon Flymaster rolled an 18 also. Okay. Um, everybody except Silas notices that Silas, you're still too busy being right. <laughs> And, uh, and I will be for some time to come. I know, <laughs> but everybody else notices that uh, that the you know not only are the women changing, but everything around you is changing. The the little quiches are kind of turning dark and maybe a little moldy. The the meat is getting looks starting to look slimy on the platter. The the um, wind chimes, you notice they're, they're made of, of bones that are hung from tendons hanging over the hanging over wherever they're hanging. And um, you know, everything's well, that's actually pretty... a lot happier. <laughs> that was resourceful. This is like oh. resourceful of them. Wait a minute. <laughs> These harpies <laughs> waste no part of the buffalo. What have I been rubbing into my chest? <laughs> <laughs> We're now on a fucking episode of Criminal Minds. <laughs> I do watch that a lot. Um, <laughs> now, um, Brandon, do you um, how do you, how do you want to test it? How do you want to try to tell? I don't know. S- sniff tentatively. If you sniff your hand, it this does smell. Spice. It does smell like olive oil. Oh, thank God. <laughs> don't worry, fellas. Everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Okay, so um so you see one the the um the sister that is uninjured takes off and starts to fly above you. Oh, and, oh Bjork, something's flying over you. Right. Roll me an initiative. Everybody? Yes, everybody. Okay. Because I don't know who she's attacking. Fandango rolls a 24. Okay. <laughs> Klaus rolls a 15. The hell he does. I'm sorry, Silas rolls a 15. <laughs> for, a, for a moment, he was back in my head there. Uh, Bjorg, is, uh, Bjorg rolls a 14. Okay. Klaus rolls a 13. Brandon Feinmaster rolls a 19. Don't argue with me. Okay. So Fendigo, How good is this dexterity? Oh, wait a minute. Let me roll hers. Okay. All right, so Fendingo, you're up. Fendingo wants to cast his brand new spell. Okay. What is your brand new spell? Fendingo wants to cast Blistering Invective. 
and unleash an insulting tirade so vicious and spiteful that enemies who hear it are physically scorched by my fury. <laughs> when I cast this spell, I make an intimidate check to demoralize each enemy within 30 feet of me. Enemies that are demoralized this way take 1d10 points of fire damage and must succeed at a reflex save or catch fire. You, you reading the spell is demoralizing me. <laughs> you mean they literally I'm going to set a bitch on fire. I believe I mentioned that tonight wasn't going to take long. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's do that then. How long does it take to read? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> What, was this spell from, like, the phrase, you just got burned? Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it was. This well, is awesome. It's, I don't know, its duration is instantaneous. Okay. I didn't, I didn't write okay. down the casting time. But it's That's... got a 30-foot radius for all enemies in 30 feet. And the inter- the interesting thing is like rounds are six second seconds long, so that that must be some badass cursing to like you know to to set them on fire in six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, give it to us. Your mama's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so read your spell. Bitch, y'all fat ass so wrinkled and ugly. Your mama had to tie a stake around your neck to get the dog to play with you. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Fandingo rolls a natural 20 on his intimidate check. Oh, ah! shit. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, roll me some damage. <laughs> You're going to relax now. These are harpies with poor self-esteem. They are now. <laughs> well, you know, look at them. <laughs> I mean, they had to use an illusions to get men. And Fandingo rolls a 2 for damage. Two? Okay. <laughs> but they're demoralized. They are. They are. D- is it just for one go round, or well, does they, they take one d10 and now they each get a reflex save, or they catch fire and continue oh, that's to right. burn? That's right. Okay, let's see about that then. That was not. That was hurtful. <laughs> it is okay. Uh, two points of damage to oh. my feelings. <laughs> okay. Lalita seems to have seems to not care what you say, but um Loisa is now on fire. Is she the one that was <laughs> petting Ron Weasley Jeremy? Um yes she is. See, if you touch Klaus's weasel, your shit gets on fire. <laughs> How long you does get a fire... burning sensation? <laughs> How long does the fire last? <laughs> I have no idea. It didn't say. Okay. But I'll go look it up. It's usually until they put it out. <laughs> yeah, generally, uh, status effects like fire, it's like, uh, until she stops dropping rolls or, you know, throws water okay. on herself. All right. Well, she's, she is up, she's the one that's flying and she's, oh, no, I'm sorry, she's the one that's standing and, uh, she's kind of running around screeching and spinning in circles because she never went to kindergarten and learned stop, drop, and roll. Huh. So, um, all right, so let's see. That was Fandingo. Uh, Brandon, you're up. Okay, so I have two choices: either the uh, monster that's on fire or the monster that's hovering. That's right. How um, how high up is the other one that's not on fire? Maybe about ten feet. Is that my range? Uh, I'll attack the one that's on fire. Okay. Thinking what do you things think? through is not my strong point. All right. What are you hitting her with? Uh, I will hit her with the broom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I haven't used my broom in a while. This seems like a, a good broom situation. Okay. okay. See if right. I can remember where the attack button is. One second. No rush. You should invest in a metal rake. <laughs> 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 now that you've you've uh, you know uh, mastered the the broom skills, you can move yeah, on to for things that are on fire. Yeah. Eventually, exactly. <laughs> kind of level up to a floor buffer. Oh, That's the point. So, <laughs> you're gonna have to be saving a lot of gold for that one. <laughs> so creatures that are demoralized are shaken, and they get a minus two to attack, minus two to saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. 
Okay, so while this uh, monster's on fire and having a, an identity crisis, I'm going to shout, Happy D and bitch, and hit her with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I almost spray Pepsi all over my monitor. <laughs> I only attacked for an eight. That was terrible. Yeah, I think he just swished by her. Yeah, Brandon swishes a lot in those hot pants. <laughs> but <laughs> but you're, not, you're not sure she even noticed because she's still kind of spinning in circles screeching. So. And on fire. And because she's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. In fact, you see her every now and then kind of try to leap up as if she wants to take off, but she can't because she's on fire. Okay, so um, Silas, you're next. All right. The one who's uh, up in the air, Silas will uh, will take aim at, and this will be a uh, a rapid <laughs> shot, deadly aim. You know, basically. <laughs> it's like, These arrows are for you. The next is for your quiche. <laughs> So just, so just a remember, reminder from last week: if the first one hits, it actually like it's two it counts as two arrows. I remember. All right, so I have to go to my fucking screen again. All right. All right. The first one hits 14 AC, and the second one hits 20 AC. Okay. Nice. Well, roll me damage then, because you hit with both. Okay. So that. So then he does a grand total of 24 points. Okay. And she's she's hit with – she's struck with both arrows. And she kind of rears back and tumbles to the ground, lies there, uh, 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 and dead. Such is the fate of all who sexually titillate Silas Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a short list. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she is. She, the, so that's two of them dead, and you now have one who's paying you no attention because she's burning, and actually she's taken some more damage. I just want to point out that Silas sounds like a serial killer who only targets people that give him boners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure he realizes they were in danger. He just felt sexually stimulated and lashed out. So, in other words, this is an episode of Criminal Minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of is. Except that Silas is the special guest star. Silas takes his vows very seriously. We, we yes, and and we're all a little nervous about that. So. Okay, so um, next, uh, Bjorn, you're next. Bjorg, all right, Bjorg, uh, Bjorg is going to look at the uh, burning harpy that. Uh, Brandon is fighting, you know, st st he's still looking kind of red-eyed and stoned, and he's going to um, approach uh, from the opposite side for a flanking bonus. I think that's another plus two, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, and he's going to, and he's going to just going to like, I am Brandon's delayed vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> and rolls for 16. <laughs> that is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Roll with some damage. <laughs> These uh, poor women. <laughs> and your girl's 19 damage. And she nice. crumbles just... to the ground, still burning. Probably, probably grateful to you for <laughs> killing her so that she's not burning anymore. She doesn't feel it anymore. Um, I'm going to look down and be like, mm, can't smoke that. <laughs> I, I, I make, I make, I already it, I make it a solid stage. true. I'll make it a point to throw the throw the quiche on her burning corpse. <laughs> oh, <my> God! <laughs> Silas walks over and tips the the platter of disgusting moldy quiche on top of the burning woman, and there's a lovely scent of burning moldy food now wafting around where once it was peaceful and lovely here. Um, this this dead devil quiche is for you, Torang. <laughs> So, Once uh, again, you're Klaus standing over like to try to enhance. Klaus would like to try to inhale her spirit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot that's about you, that. That's how you level up. 
Bjork's gonna <laughs> Bjork's gonna join Klaus in um, inhaling the corpse fumes. But you know, so he let's also say combat like, end without corpse defilements. Just <laughs> well, no, it's know, just inhaling. There are two more creatures that aren't oh, on fire. Oh, oh, damn. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, you know, are there? I thought yeah, they're, they're only dead, total. They're not on they're, fire. They're all dead. They're not on fire. Oh. oh. You know, if you want to burn all three and inhale all those souls, uh, go nuts. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I think we're already at nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nuts are... So are, you... <laughs> so are you guys doing that? Let's Let's not get as broad as you guys. Yeah. And Jingo ain't smoking no fucking heart. <laughs> you already did. Oh, yeah, I did. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Brandon still just assumes that this is what you do when you defeat someone. This is uh, this is his knowledge of the world since leaving the temple. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Um, <laughs> wait, the one that's burning, that's the one that, uh, that caressed Ron, Ron Weasley Jeremy? Yes, that's the one that that uh, that was putting her foul disgusting hand on your weasel. All right. Well, I would like Ron Weasley Jeremy to also inhale the fumes. <laughs> Jeez. So you're gonna hold him in one arm and and uh, both of you lean over together yep. and that's take a right. nice deep breath. Okay, that's just a disgusting um. smell. <laughs> I think we've all oh, that's the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this, this this place is a temple, so after Silas retrieves whatever arrows he can from the arrows he can from their corpses, he's gonna set about desecrating it. Okay. God damn it. In, in what fashion are you going to desecrate it, Silas? Oh, well, you know, kick kick things over, you know. Just you know, let Klaus walk around. Yeah, you, you burn whatever's burnable. Okay. Uh, Brandon Scroll, would like to cr- cross out the name of their god, right, Toreg. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to use a, a little bit of bone or some a charred bone to write it with, unless you have pen and ink. Uh, he normally just pees into the ground. That's... Oh, okay. Well, I provided you, you with plenty of charred harpy to write with. <laughs> Brandon so, would like to um, uh, empty out his his water skin of terrible wine and his other water skin and fill it with the oil, if that's possible. That is absolutely possible, and that will oh. be. That will just about fill both of them. The Excellent. amount of oil that she has. So well, have. guys, this has been a complete success. <laughs> <laughs> so, how it's... terrible is that wine? Is it is it like drinkable or? It's not wine anymore. It's it's kind of yeah, muddy man. water, a little bit salty. Yeah, yeah it's disgusting. All right, well, um, Klaus would like to go uh, loot the place for whatever valuables he can find, and after every time Silas passes somewhere and crosses out the name of their god and writes Toreg, Klaus would like to write sucks underneath. <laughs> all right, we will. We will. Every time you see the word Toreg, um, all of a sudden you'll see somebody. Klaus comes up behind, writes sucks, sucks, Toreg sucks, Toreg sucks, all over. So nobody will have any. I want to do it stealthily. Well, of course. Uh, you know, it just appears, you okay. know, as as Silas wanders ball off, you know, a minute later, it says Torig sucks. I am How, gonna, who could have done that? I am going to ordain your weasel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> oh, I hope so. <laughs> you, you tried that once. <laughs> it didn't work out well for either of us. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so um, Silas is desecrating and Klaus is wandering around looking for things. Uh, give mm-hmm. me a perception, Klaus. Sure thing. He perceives that Torex sucks. There's a perception. I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure all of you feel. <laughs> or most of God you. God damn it. All right, Klaus. Klaus perceives at a seven. <laughs> okay. Cross Actually, this really wasn't hard to find, so you know, I'm going to go ahead and say you saw it. Um, there's up up behind the there was a big stone um uh the the big stone uh temple kind of shrine looking thing where the where the olive oil was sitting originally before Brandon helped himself. 
um, behind it, you find a big pile of bones and uh, rotten yes. clothing. Do they and, belong to uh, a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> there, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. So, but it's God a damn it. number of <laughs> <laughs> bones and rotten clothing and some shoes and uh, the occasional hat flung about, uh, skulls bashed in. Um, it's all piled up. Um, some bags and there's rope and all kinds of things. All you say piled hats. Up here. Is uh-huh. any of those hats a fedora at all? Just uh, <laughs> want to make that clear. <laughs> Alas, no. <laughs> okay, next just, time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just oh, you know I know I know you probably never will, but somebody someday needs to cosplay Brandon in the hot pants with a fedora on. <laughs> I'm trying to cultivate that look. Everybody, <laughs> everybody will be cosplaying it. <laughs> there we go. You know, Dragon Con is in August. So, um, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so Klaus, you found this big pile of what looks to be trash. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm going to search through it and see if I can find anything of value. Okay, you can start searching through. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, roll me another perception. There and actually, go. everybody else now roll me a perception too. All right. Uh, this should be God, embarrassing. Klaus rolls another seven. Another seven. Okay. Let's see what you can find. Silas rolls a fifteen. Okay. Ah, uh, where's your... my There's my list. Ford rolls a seven as well. Seven. Fending, Fendinga rolls a twenty-five. Okay. So while we're waiting for Brandon to, he's cleaning off his hands because they're really oily and he can't roll his his. <laughs> <laughs> so Fendingo, you hi. notice hi, you notice that Klaus has wandered off and now is making clattery noises just behind that big stone shrine over there. Oh, Fandingo's going after that shit. Okay. (laughs) Klaus, you are digging through the pile and you find... You find... Sorry, that Brandon Firemaster rolled the natural one anyway, so um, it it doesn't really (laughs) matter. (laughs) Brandon's so happy with his oil, he really doesn't care what anybody else is doing. Yeah, that's in character. It is. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so, you're still smoking. You're, I'm just <laughs> so you're you're smoking a a piece of paper with grass and leaves in it. Yes. Yep. Okay. And quiche. And, and there, yeah. Oh, there was quiche in it too. I think I think I don't know, but <laughs> he's gonna, actually Bjork is going to look and see if the quiche that was thrown on the corpse has been uh, has been any better cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Cooked, yes, but it was still moldy and slimy when it got mm. thrown on. So, you know, yeah. try it as, as you as you wish. But, yeah. uh, but I've got Klaus, another gill spell for the day. It's okay. Go for it, Bjork. <laughs> Thinking about it being like moldy mushrooms in it. Oh, <laughs> mushrooms! <laughs> Bjork, moldy mushrooms. Bjork will eat the quiche in hopes of having a vision. Oh, God. <laughs> We have a psychedelic blue <laughs> barbarian with a dick drawn on his face. He's <laughs> smoking paper and eating rotten quiche. This is like the O'Doul's of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> this is what so, Nancy Reagan warned us about. <laughs> so, Klaus, you, uh, you have found a little um, leather pouch. Sweet. You gonna open it? Yes. Okay. You open it up, and inside is a small gray stone, about the uh. I don't know, about about the size of two twenty-sided die sitting on top of each other. Oh, this wait a minute. If you're gonna tell me that in, to... in the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy world they have twenty-sided die, that is just <laughs> too bad for me to handle. That was that was just for Robert. That was not for Klaus. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. 
I can deal with well, that. Well, this seems like it. This seems like it blows as much as everything else in this <laughs> shit pile, but I think I'll hold on to this. Okay. So you're going to put it back in the pouch and... I'll put it back yeah. in the pouch and hang on to it. The, the pouch is, you know, otherwise functional as a, as a pouch. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's good. Like, yeah, free pouch. It's like, free it's little, <laughs> it would hold about 10 gold. It's it's a little pouch. What you so, doing over gold. here, Klaus? And... And right about then, Fandingo comes up on you. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Oh, the most creepy thing ever. Just looking through this <laughs> pile of trash and, and remains. Find anything <laughs> cool? No. Uh, <laughs> trash. Well, then maybe I'll take a look. And Fandingo's right. going to start digging through the pile of trash. All right, roll me a perception. They have crushed every other one, so this ought to be a natural one. You don't have to roll very high. <laughs> Fandingo rolls a 20 for his perception check. Okay. Let's see what Fandingo finds. Fandingo, you find... What do you find? Oh. <laughs> you find a glove. Not of the love variety? No, no, no. This is a glove okay. for your hand. Um... It's it's actually very nice. It doesn't look uh, rotten and torn up and shredded and blood stained and all that. Uh, it's actually kind of a nice glove. Looks if you touch it, it's it's very soft and smooth. Oh, please please tell me it's a white single glove for our bar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> does it, does it have sequins? Alas, no. It is oh. brown. It oh. is it is a nice uh, deer hide brown. Understated, Michael. Right hand or left hand? Left hand. Put that bugger on. Okay. <laughs> we just randomly ah. put on clothes we found in trash piles. <laughs> I was trying to bang a harpy five minutes ago. And then I insulted her so much she caught fire. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm going to put on the glove. It's like the not even the third stupidest thing I've done in this since we got off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'm pulling up to tell you what happens. So, Okay, so you put on the glove. And suddenly you have a thought. That's a first. Uh, <laughs> this, a word comes into your head. Um, assist. Like C-Y-S-T? Because that's great. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> A S S I S T. Assist. Okay. I don't know what he's going to assist with one but, hand, and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or is it perhaps assist? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that would be in, in the Silas Kane dictionary. <laughs> this is a plus one glove of butt fetish. <laughs> plus one glove of prostate exam? <laughs> No, I'm Fandingo holds up his left hand and says, assist. You say assist? I Nothing say ass or assist. Okay, you say assist. Um, suddenly, everything in about a three-foot radius of you lifts up. All of the yeah. traction stuff lifts up and hangs there. What does Klaus do? I don't know. What does Klaus uh, do? Does he float? No, no, Klaus does Aww. not. Uh, Klaus would like to take a closer look at the floating trash. <laughs> <laughs> at this moment, I would like to note Bjorg turns around and starts paying attention and <laughs> takes another good long look at the legal document he's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Silas will call over. Good job, brother. Toreg helps those who help themselves to others' trash. Bjorg <laughs> <laughs> right. right. will walk over to Brandon and say to Brandon uh, off to the side, are you seeing this? Sorry, what's natural one? I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> <laughs> so Fandingo's going to start waving his hand around, hoping he can make shit dance like the brooms in Fantasia. 
Is he going to start yelling asses over again? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, so you're you're making the trash dance? Well, if it will. Well, yeah. um, it doesn't really – the pieces don't start dancing individually. It, it kind of moves as a whole chunk. So, you know, if you move it around, it moves where you point to it to move. And after a minute, it all falls down on the ground again. All right. Cool. Okay. I have a love of floaty shit. <laughs> I'm almost glad I'm not paying attention to this. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Silas, have you joined them now? No, still uh... – you know, he looked over at one point, but uh, for the most part, he's ah. uh, he's still desecrating. Okay, all right. <laughs> you know, uh, desecrating Bjorg. is hard work. Bjorg will uh, Bjorg will will look through the trash. Okay, all righty. So, give me a perception. All right. Let's see what. Ah. See what we get here. Oh, she totally trying to um, right-handed glove. Let's see here. Bjorg <laughs> rolls a natural twenty on his perception check. Okay. Well. Bjork finds a another leather bag. Um, mm. it's, a, it's a bigger one than, than Klaus found. Um, this one's probably more of the standard size that you see people use as backpacks and that kind of thing. Bjork will examine this bag. Okay. Klaus found a mouse scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, dude. Genetics are a bitch. <laughs> So uh, are you just looking at the outside? It, you know, he'll open it. See what's oh, in it. He'll open it. Okay. Because it, it looks like a fairly nondescript leather bag on the outside. <laughs> on the inside, you find a roll of um, very soft bandages and a two lengths, two three-foot lengths of thick leather cord all rolled up together. Hmm. Uh, he will he, you know, Bjorg is, a, is, is not the wisest man, so he's going to just kind of take out the leather and examine it. Maybe start wrapping it around random appendages. The leather cords? Okay. Yes. Hang on a second. He's kind of acting, kind of acting like a stoned out Mr. Bean right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Which, which random appendages are you? Uh, uh, he's going to start right wrapping now. the leather around his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a very random appendage. Uh, <laughs> that is an appendage. No, nothing really happens when you wrap it around your head. He's going to attempt to, he's going to wrap it around. He's going to wrap it around his arm with the compass on it. Maybe this the will make the needle stop. Arm with the compass on it. What, what, do you wear what kind of clothing do you wear um he wears he uh bjorg wears like hide armor uh and i probably it's probably like sleeveless but with like uh wrist guards and such all right good okay so you wrap it around your your bicep and uh all of a sudden you look and your arm looks really big because you're Whoa! big but bigger bigger really big whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys, you guys hear hear Bjorg go bigger, and you look at, him and his his arms appear much larger than normal. Oh, oh, why are my arms so big? Are we talking like muscular or like just like longer, like gorilla arms? Muscular. Or muscular to no. begin with. Yeah, yeah, it looks looks bigger. His muscles look like they've grown. His muscles grew three sizes that day. This leather is amazing! <laughs> hey, uh, let me borrow a piece of that. <laughs> and then I'll I don't be know back. What these are. You know, <laughs> if the hour of God was here, he'd probably promote you to intermediate adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now Bjorg is walking around with these things around his arms, just marveling. Because really stoned and so you know, he's stoned. These two, I thought it would be a good idea to put them on my body and you were you were white look they're, <laughs> your arms are big wow and he's you guys can see he's just walking around he's he's absolutely marveling at the, the joy of his giant arms now god some people get <laughs> over yourself man <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are you gonna, is anybody looking at you? Uh, yeah, um, I would like to. I would like to ask 
Uh, Klaus would like to ask Fendingo, can you do that uh, cool glove thing again? I can try. Assist. And... With a grand gesture. <laughs> That's why I laughed when you found that. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you say, assist, and you put your arm forward as if you're on a stage doing Hamlet's, and uh, the, um, everything lifts back up. All right. Well, that, that's happening. Uh, Klaus would like to hold the the rock that is in his tiny pouch uh-huh. in his hand and uh, cast a d- detect magic spell and just scan the whole pile of trash and the rock and uh, okay. see if anything's if, if anything else is magical in there. Okay. Give me a roll to for that. Uh, is there a Whichever. roll? Is there a roll for that? Oh, it's just our ra- no, oh no, it's just not. Detect, no, this yeah. You okay, detect how, magical auras. That's right. Okay. You, and you, you do you detect magic on your little stone, and <laughs> let's see. <laughs> you detect um. What's the what's the area of that spell? It's a range sixty foot. It's a cone shaped emanation. I'm okay. Yeah, you know, standing far, far enough away to get the whole trash pile and. In my okay. cone. Well, then you're noticing you're noticing magic is uh, there are auras on everything you guys have found so far, and uh, there seems to be one other little little aura popping up in the middle of the trash heap. Well, right. nothing to see here. I'm gonna go grab that thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you tell Fandango he can put everything down, or? Yeah, yeah. Well, or keep playing with it. I don't give a shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, All I right. think it's going to kind of move, wave it around. <laughs> the goal now is to make the trash pile mm-hmm. dance so Klaus <laughs> can't get to the glowy spot. Can yes. I see the glowy spot? Uh, I don't no, think I'm the one only the caster can magic. do it. Yeah. No. Well, then I'm just going to wave shit around randomly and maybe I'll get lucky and Klaus won't be able to okay, so... <laughs> find anything. Um, Klaus, uh, let's see. Can you roll against your dexterity for me? Sure thing. Okay. Because John, because Fandingo is making the trash dance. If so he's rolling a to... dex check, <clears throat> Fandingo's stupidity check, I think he's at a minus. <laughs> Wait, does, does Silas see the trash dancing around? Uh, give me right. a perception. Because Klaus rolls a 14 for dexterity. Okay, and what is your dex? Great. Uh, 24. Okay. Right, Silas what, what, what am a, I supposed to be rolling? Right. Silas rolls a natural 20 for perception. Okay. Uh, yes, you do notice that John is, that Fandingo is making the trash dance and that Klaus is, is well, jumping around you, grabbing you, at wait, something. Wait, wait. I, I, I see the trash da- dancing around. Do I know that Fandingo is making a dance? Um, yeah, probably. Because you were, you've been listening. You said you were you were kind Natural of looking 20. at them every now and then, so yeah, you know it's him. You know you heard you heard him. You at least you heard him say assist and do the big arm thing. So. All right. So, Silas, Silas will assume that Fandigo's in charge and it's not like devil trash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's so good. <laughs> Fandigo may be in charge and it be devil trash. <laughs> So Klaus, despite the um, despite the dancing around, you are able to grab the one thing that you did see glowing, and um, yeah, it's thanks, a, thanks for being a dick though. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, a, pal. I got you. It's a whipped up leather quiver. Um, looks you know it's, looks like somebody clawed at it and ripped some of the leather away, and there are three arrows in it. Sweet. So. All right. Well, I'll check this shit out later. Okay. You 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 do realize that you're stealing treasure in like full sight of the party, right? <laughs> I'm just picking up some trash. I don't see nothing. <laughs> I'm still glaring furiously at Bjorg. I'm just <laughs> making shit float. I don't care. And we can flex I don't together have a more easily now. John's- You're dead to me. Free quiver. <laughs> Three <laughs> arrows. With me. 
three arrows that glow. To me. To him. To you. To you, yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yes. Not to anybody else. To anybody else, it's just, it looks like a whooped up quiver and some kind of beat up arrows, so. I mean, Silas already this, has his magical arrows of Torag, so what more is, does he need? That is true. <laughs> what more does he need? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, jo- Fandingo, the, uh, the trash heap crumbles to the ground again. Ooh. Okay. So, um, are you guys going to look anymore? Uh, do you want to keep going through the trash? Do you want to do anything else up here on the hill? I've seen all I need to see. <clears throat> Well, if, 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 there's no, if there's nothing left to desecrate, what were we supposed to do? Gather olives or some something? Well, the the olive farms are on the other side of the island. You had come up here hoping for olive oil, which Brandon has um, has obtained at risk to life and limb, but he managed to obtain it. And oh. uh, yes, how much olive oil did we need? I I don't know, Brandon. How much olive oil did you need? Yeah, I just I was wondering about the whole wee thing. I don't know how much olive oil you need, but I need <laughs> all of the olive oil. So, uh, you have the olive oil. I'll have the glove of floaty shit. I'm good with that. Bending, Bendigo points at Brandon and says, assist. Nothing happens. Brandon points at Fandingo and says, get the fuck out of my personal space. <laughs> Oddly enough, enough, also nothing happens. <laughs> um, you do notice that the the sun is starting to go down. I mean, it's not sunset or anything, but it's it's starting to be late afternoon. Does the ocean look beautiful? It's starting to, yes. Even oh, even look, more beautiful than it already did. Um, I'm just I'm, I'll take in the scene with Ron Weasley, Jeremy, and uh... <laughs> having a moment with his weasel. Yeah. It's like a Cialis commercial without the bathtub. <laughs> I mean, there's a fountain. <laughs> there is a fountain. Okay, go lay in the fountain. Make it a Cialis commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold hands with your wheezing. So, so anyway, it is getting late, though. Oh, uh, so I guess we should go back to the boat. Well, those people in the warehouse should be getting off of work right about now. It's a good which, tell, which, which tells me they need some Toreg in their lives. <laughs> Bjorg is going to look around red-eyed giant bicep and say, I honestly forgot why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Your arms are strangely large. <laughs> I know. It's yes, amazing. Yes, they are. He's going to walk down the, the, the path with both arms up the whole way, just looking at each bicep one at a time. <laughs> just absolutely <laughs> furious. <laughs> hey, you could have hunted through the trash, but you were busy no. being happy with your, your olive oil. No, Silas is going to head back to the warehouse to be ready for when those, when those uh, fortunate workers get off work. Okay. <laughs> is anybody else going with him? I, I'm going in the same direction. Well, yeah, that's I'm not exactly with him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> God. So, so everybody's walking down the path. Yes. In a, yeah. Okay. All right. Takes you about 30 minutes to get back down to the to the dock, and um, when you get there, you see that the warehouse is all locked up. There's a chain closing the doors. And uh, the the uh, dock master's office is also locked up, and um, Footstool is on the dock, pacing back and forth. And he sees you yeah, as you what, what are, Go. Sorry. No, uh, go ahead. What are we meant to be doing on this island? Because uh, we just murdered some prominent <laughs> people. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Maybe we should leave. Yeah. Or maybe I to. You you really only stop to pick up olives for Judge Hungry likes olives in his martinis in the evening and so did we do that? Uh, Footstool did. <laughs> oh good, all right. Well there you go. Footstool no mission accomplished, olives. guys. Footstool got the olives and we went and murdered people. <laughs> he did. He, <laughs> Must he be Tuesday. Sees you, he sees you coming out of the trees and he says, "Where the hell have you been?" Well, uh, so. 
I got cock blocked by a just defrocked paladin. Uh, you know, you know, I I don't even want to know. The tide has already started turning. Just get on the damn boat. Come on, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. We can't leave yet. Why? We not? haven't because we haven't converted these people. Fine, you stay. Everybody else on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Does everybody, everybody, get on the, on the ship. George is gonna walk under the ship, still furiously flexing. Okay. But still looks at you and says, what the hell happened to you? Wait, never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> leather! <laughs> leather. Gives you a yeah, thumbs up. Now a leather queen. Leather. Um, okay. He, he still he, also has a dick drawn on his head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's a little, it, actually, actually, it's a little smudge now because you put the leather oh. on there first. So right. it, it sort of still looks like a dick, sort of. If it needs <laughs> some touch-ups. <laughs> was all over that. There you go. <laughs> okay. And uh, so you get on the boat, and uh, Footstool has the men pull up the gangplank and drop sail, and you start sailing away. Uh, well, if I can't uh, if I can't convert the dock workers, I'll convert the sailors. And so Silas sees goes to converting sailors, while the rest of you kick back and. Uh, I guess go get some rest because it's been a very, very busy afternoon for all of you. And oh, sure. that and that is where we will stop. Hey, thank you, Misty. Cool. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for having Thanks, me. This Misty. was fun. We appreciate you coming out. Um, <laughs> well, this week like we are Mandela. doing questions, as you all know, and we've asked you to, if you have any, especially from Misty, to send them that way. So, uh, Joe, do you want to walk us into that? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> okay, so our question is from our friend Daniel. And he says, do you guys listen to other fantasy or other genre actual play podcasts? Other ones? Thanks. Shit, I don't listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> definitely already I listen to a lot of... Yeah, Adventure Zone. That's, that's the definitive one, I think. Um... As for somebody, someone who's doing exactly kind of what we're doing, there's, there's sci-fi authors uh, playing old school D and D. Obviously not as good as us, but you can check them out. I like I the mean, podcast where they good. review chain restaurants because I'm just a big old fat ass at heart. <laughs> I'm a big old fat ass at ass. <laughs> so I need the link for that podcast, yeah. The dope I boys. It's actually really funny. I basically only listen to professional wrestling podcasts because. I'm that kind of nerd. I only listen to podcasts in the car, and like you know, these days I'm like, um, if I'm in the car like five minutes for the for for the week, that's like a long time. There's one I'm considering starting because I have a friend of mine like talking up to me a lot. Uh, apparently, it's a, a group of guys who who um, play the uh, Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG, and I guess this started as it's they did it like they did it like as a one shot to to play test the system, and they liked it so much that they've been playing for several episodes now, and they're a delightfully fucked up party of people. I think it's called Campaign. I'm just trying to think of the ones that I've given a go. Uh, Adventuring Bastards, Drunkards and Dragons. Uh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, I think if you go on yeah. Reddit, there's kind of a thread dedicated to it. We're, de we're definitely not an original concept. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> we are definitely the best one. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We're, We're the, the only, only one, one with, with professional fitness. authors playing. Oh, no, wait. Well, one yeah. mentioned. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only one with this bunch of idiots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I listen to a bunch of book marketing podcasts, but that's kind of boring. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Right. I listen to those when you guys are on them. Yeah. Our, uh, our next question is for Steve. Uh, our oh. friend uh, Legion asks, uh, "What would Brandon's advice be to a junior adventurer who like who like him likes to punch things?" Oh, uh, if you follow your heart and your fist. That's the only uh, <laughs> the advice you can give, really. Don't overthink it. Just go out there and make friends with the universe with your fists. Wow. That way, I don't know. That's what I tell my children. <laughs> 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 uh, our friend Jennifer wants to know uh, how many Misty episodes are we going to get is there a plan and are there more guest DMs in the works 
plan. Oh, plan. <laughs> plan. <laughs> yeah. That's the funniest word. <laughs> plan. Um, Jennifer, there were there was really only supposed to be one, but it took so long to get to the battle that we ended up with two. So thanks, guys, for letting me come back. And uh, at this moment, that's probably all that we're doing, you know, unless something changes down the road. Uh, but there are more guest DMs coming. We're doing a whole little uh, special run um, so that, you know, we can get some diversity and shake things up and just have a have a fun little mini series. So there's yes. a couple more coming, but we're going to let those be surprises as they roll out. This is Drew's way of saying he's sick, sick and tired of us. Yeah, I'm moving <laughs> right now. I've got a house that I'm, I'm, I'm just dealing with that shit. And this was really one big conspiracy plan to lighten my load while this is happening. So, oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> he's oh. a load. <laughs> Never trusted me. Yeah. No, if I was doing that, I would have uh, shoved the editing off on somebody else because that's the time-consuming part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, our friend Lyle says, uh, if the situation came up where Drew could not GM for the evening and everyone else was present, who, if anyone, would be the second string GM? The B-team B GM. The backup. The not as good, but good enough GM. Anybody but Bevan, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> Wait, who uh, the fuck said that? <laughs> Lyle. <laughs> That's the question. Their name is Lyle. I agree. I agree, but fuck you, Lyle. <laughs> not it Hartness uh, says no not it uh, I'm, I'm actually DMing a game tomorrow night so I mean you know but I, I you know something I, I wouldn't I wouldn't tolerate all your shit I'd probably like you know throw like you know just smite y'all instantly it'd be a very short game all our shit <laughs> all our <laughs> shit uh Crackle, I'd, please. <laughs> I'd be willing to take a stab at it. I think uh, it could be could could be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I've got where it takes. It sounds hard. <laughs> Just said hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I think if I had to appoint someone to run in my absence, I would be really tempting just to see what Steve would do. So I think it would be fun, yeah. especially because he's the least experienced on D and D, and sometimes that leads to some of the funniest uh, outcomes. Because when you don't have preconceptions, yeah. you don't adhere to them. Very true. Uh, That's an interesting uh, philosophy. I'd I'd leave the the person most likely to fuck it all up in church. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an entertainment podcast, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, to be fair, you know. For what value of fucking it all up? Well, right. Yeah. Can you, yeah, you basically DM and then you guys do as players? Is what he's saying. I'm still, yeah, I'm still not sure how a normal game is supposed to actually happen. So. And with this yeah. group, you'll never find out. <laughs> it's, sort of, it's, it's, it's sort of our function to leave the assholes of plots in ruins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you did very well this time. Score. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so our friend Jeremy says, thanks for joining the guys, Misty. You were a great guest. Have you uh, have you done a lot of GMing in the past? Either way, uh, were the guys as unruly as you expected, or uh, um, or uh, was I hear uh, was or was I hearing some and 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 yet I was not prepared in those laughs. laughs. Uh, the guys were not any more unruly than I expected. See, what you have to understand, I taught preschool for fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's about us. I was I was uh, um, eminently prepared for any sort of that kind of thing, but um, no, I haven't de I haven't game mastered much. Um, actually, I think the last time I game mastered was Call of Cthulhu back in the dawn of time. So you know, this was any any hesitation you heard from me was shit. Do I remember how to do this? So, you know, but it it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. So. And call of oh, the campaigns tend to be pretty damn short. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, two of my guys found a foot inside a shoe that was all that was left of a man who had been pulled through a, an iron fence. And that pretty much put paid to the rest of the party. They all ran screaming and like, OK, next. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but 
All right. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, our friend, let's see. Next, oh, it, uh, it's Christopher. He said, I'm building a dark Avenging Knight D&D character. If I choose the Noble Knight background variant, does the Squire Retainer fight alongside me, or is he, she, a coward like the other two commoner retainers? The fuck? That, that's I'd an say, actual I'd rules say, question. I don't have any idea what that you, means. that's why. Yeah, boo. <laughs> this is not a place where you ask actual rules questions. <laughs> we don't um, know I, I don't know what's Spons. funnier. My answer is fish. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just zoned out on that. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on there. Really, I mean, I think, is there I, a dick joke in there anywhere? Because if not, I'm out. No, I think I'm if you've been, word problem. If you've been listening to this head, until but... now, and you think we're authorities on how this is supposed to go, <laughs> then, then I don't we know want some that. of what you're smoking. Because <laughs> it ain't legal document. Paper. <laughs> hey man I smoked that paper and there was burning quiche and floating trash and my biceps got bigger it was a good trip <laughs> he's got a point alright um, so let's see here our friend Bradley says uh, I'm curious about how the Amazon add-ons by ebook at audible work for you guys as authors I mean I assume you make more but well you know what they say about assumptions Yes, it has the word ass in it. <laughs> huh? yeah, I'm going to go around and say we don't add-ons. know how it works as an Amazon add-on. Well, well, we know how Matchbook works because pretty much like, you know, we know that like oh, you know, it's one of those. Oh, if, you, if you buy like the book, you'll probably pretty much get nothing if you get the if you get the ebook too. I know we get paid for like, you know, for the Audible, like, you know, WhisperSync add-ons. I have no idea how much we fucking get paid. Oh, it's try, cause, nothing. Yeah, yeah, but trying trying to read Audible's uh, like, you know, income statements is like your cuneiform there <laughs> well like a lot of times i think with the deal i've got set up is i get 40 percent of the buy price so if you pay two bucks for a whisper sync book i get 80 cents and that gets split between me and my narrator so i get 40 cents i think uh, Maybe. i'm not bothered i'm a, i'm in it for the ranking so do that guys <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I don't I'm in it for strippers and blood. It's all good. Yeah, I make the audio yeah. just because people like it. I mean, yeah, buy the shit. I don't. Yeah. I'll make some money. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've said it's like cool that they, it's cool that people ask these questions, but I mean, I'm, I'm like, read it and enjoy it however you want to however you want to do it, you know? Yeah. If we weren't comfortable <laughs> with the format, we wouldn't be listed there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't not get a whisper sync thing because you think it's gonna bone us out of two bucks. I mean. <laughs> Come on, we don't, we're doing this podcast for free. Wait, you guys aren't getting paid? Oh. God damn it. And, and, Drew, and Drew pulls a Klaus on our sponsorship uh, dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. crap, you're actually getting sponsored by showing up drunk? I know, right? <laughs> Where do I get that money? Well, you have to show up drunk a lot. Like, they demand oh. commitment to the product. <laughs> I would say, you know, if you've bought something and you feel you've got more than you paid for, uh, likes and shares, man, word of mouth. You know, that's that's a great payment for any author. And reviews. Yeah, and, and reviews. Reviews. Yeah. Reviews. Reviews, are reviews. The yeah, review. We got one more question. Uh, our friend Chris says, was one of Klaus's parents a judge? Because Richter means judge in German. And something funny, the name Klaus reminds, uh, reminds me of Klau in German, which means steel, and he is a rogue. Did you do this on purpose, Robert? Um, also, he spelled rogue rouge, so technically he's asking if you are, especially he's saying Klaus is a rouge. Does Robert do anything um, on purpose? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> knowing Bevan, I'm going to guess this is a no. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny though that he has in fact said uh, that his that his name apparently means steel judge, which means apparently he's going to have to steal Judge Hungry. <laughs> okay. now, that um, would be the crime of the century. You could steal his eyes <laughs> or his heart. <laughs> Klaus never really gets to know his parents as they were eaten by bears. But um, <laughs> no, look, is he Cathar's brother? <laughs> The name Klaus Richter came from a, a an old computer game called XCOM, oh. which uh, do you, do you know that? All right, my son. It was like some later. kind of alien invasion game, and and all your little soldiers had names, and 
there were two cool names. There were Wolfgang Xander and Klaus Richter. And I've, I, I don't know, Klaus Richter just oh, struck a chord with me. definitely have to have an episode where Klaus meets his uh, long-lost half-brother, Wolfgang Xander. <laughs> Wolfgang Xander. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've had several characters over the years named Klaus Richter. And this is, well, this is the one that... So, so what we're saying is that Klaus famous. is basically like a really fucked up version of the Eternal Champion. Yeah. <laughs> From lifetime to lifetime, he is reincarnated to be a complete <laughs> dick to everyone. <laughs> nice. That's and we brought good. it full circle to a book that Bevan would it's write. Like, it's like... Like the opposite of Quantum Leap. Oh well, before we go, Misty, do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, <laughs> right now I'm I'm waiting on things to come out. Kestrel's Dance, as I said, is going to be coming out later this summer from Lore Seekers Press. Also, the Weird West of uh, Shadow Council novellas are going to be coming out later this year. I hope. <laughs> um, your publisher. I know. <laughs> Shh, don't tell my publisher, even though he's sitting right there. But um, also, I wanted to mention that all of you guys are going to be joining me at Con Carolinas in. Yes. in <laughs> and I'm really excited to have you all there. And so I hope that all the listeners who can reasonably make the trip will come on out and join us too. It's going to be a lot of fun. And you can find all the information you need at concarolinas.org. May I uh, say something about the GoFundMe prizes? Yes, go for it. Uh, yeah. Basically, you all know I, I've already met my uh, ticket price, so I'm definitely going to Con Carolinas. But I would say that those of you who have had contributed, please do check your junk mail, just in case you've missed the email from me so I can give you the prizes. The prizes are, now that it's not a surprise, um, a Temple of the Many Fists uh, leaflet, along with a Brandon Five Master themed button pack, and also uh, pretty much most of my ebooks. So, uh, if you would still like to contribute to the GoFundMe, basically anything we get now over the threshold goes into the kind of Authors and Draggers pot to help with our con costs and our uh, mandatory bucket of heroin that we need so uh, <laughs> if you want if you want the bad news to leave it, you can still contribute uh 10 bucks to the gofundme awesome. tell me more about this mandatory bucket of heroin man and, and, and <laughs> is somebody gonna have game? this on their table at con carolinas <laughs> mandatory bucket of heroin yeah <laughs> yeah no no I, you're gonna have to do the heroin in your hotel room i'm sorry but... all right so we, we gotta okay. we gotta show we got to show up to the uh, to the A and D panel with like powdered sugar all over our faces. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just want to show up with actual hair? Oh, oh yeah, you will talk about it. Now. Talk about it now. I got a guy. Yeah. I mean, um, that would be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, man, no, man, no, man, no, 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 I'm just eating. This isn't heroin, man. This, these, these are bath crystals. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right, no, folks, I got well, off heroin. I'm just doing meth now. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, one more thank you to Misty for graciously uh, putting up with us for two whole games. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks You're with uh, another surprise Thanks, GM to take us on a special adventure. But until then, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye. See ya. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to the original creators which is us, the people who are playing it. The opening music, Take a Chance, and closing theme, Master of the Feast, are both credited to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and also used under a Creative Commons license.